Joseph Downey, Esports News Network at the Pokemon Pittsburgh Regional Championship with Dylan Salvanera. Dylan, tell us about your uh, regional so far. Uh, it's been a pretty good weekend. Uh, I will say the event itself has been pretty good aside from like getting here. Uh, I, I was um, fortunate enough to get in at the second wave of registration, but it was kind of rough because everybody already has plans, everything's expensive, so I was like, I, I, for a moment there, I didn't even know if I was actually going to make it here because like prices were really getting high. But thankfully, I was able to, uh, one of my friends had space and I was able to uh, get in with them. Perfect. All right, so tell us about the team you were running because you've got a testing group that ran the Kyle Living House set that Kyle ended up going pretty far with here at the tournament. And you ran something a little bit different, so tell us about it. Yeah, so my team, I pretty much used the exact same six that Maddie Morgan used at Get Top 8 at World Set, uh, which was Tornadus, Urshifu, Golden Go, Fluttermane, Rillaboom, and Landorus. But instead of using his sets, I took my own sets and kind of went with it. Uh, like he ran uh, Terra Water, uh, Earthquake on his Landorus. I ran Terra Flying, Terra Blast. Uh, another change that I ended up making to the team is that he ran Modest, Tornadus. I ran Bold, Max, Defense, Covert Cloak, Tornadus. And then, like, I think the only other change that I made was running Choice Specs on my Flutter Main. And then, um, instead of him running Max, Defense, Bold, Golden Go, I ran Modest, Golden Go, uh, with a lot more special attack investment because uh, it only came up in one scenario yesterday um, where it probably could have helped me a lot in one set. Uh, with the bold golden go, but I do not regret like all the changes that I made to the team, especially the Landris one to Terra Flying, because that actually came into a lot in my later games, and it helped me win a lot of sets. Gotcha. Okay, very cool. So that uh, that golden go that you were talking about, what is that uh, meant to counter and push against? Because noticeably, the uh, Heatran, the seal type that most people are using, is not around. Golden go is much more popular in Series One, Two, and Regulation C. So how does Golden Go work here in Regulation D? How did you find success with it? Uh, it's kind of a little bit like the how it was ran in earlier formats. You could either use it as like a fast, uh, hard-hitting specs user with Terra Steel or Scarf, or you could just run it with setup with uh, like a recovery item and then a defensive Terra. Um, a lot of I, I tend to focus heavily on more like a balanced play style where it's like I have a lot of nice defensive and pivoting options. You know, things like Landris that can switch in when Intimidate, Rillaboom that can switch in Fake Out, Iron Hands. I didn't use it, but it's um, one, one Pokemon that I've really been loving to use this uh, generation. Uh, very bulky, Fake Out, very strong. Um, just so like, you know, the very bulky offensive Pokemon that just like, love to position around. And I love having the ability to have like a setup mine. Like uh, Golden Go is, fits that bill perfectly. It, you just set up a nasty plot and you have all these Pokemon that you can just maneuver the board position around a lot so that it puts you in a favorable position and then once you set up that Golden Go, you can start punching holes in everybody. Now following the World Championship, we saw just a couple of changes with the metagame. Nothing, you know, that the, the top six still say the same, top ten probably still say the same, but you're seeing a little bit more Bramble Ghast, a little bit more Reggie Drago. What are some things you ran into in this tournament that you didn't see as much of previously? Uh, I think the one thing that I think I saw a lot of, it was probably be like Chiyu dedicated teams, like teams dedicated to enabling the Chiyu, like Tornadoes with Tailwind and then Sunny Day and the Chiyu having Life Orb and or Choice Specs as opposed to like the ones that I've been seeing is like been safety goggles. So I know Chiyu didn't have a lot of representation at Worlds. Uh, one thing I was surprised about that I didn't see any, any at all was Hisuian Arcanine because that was actually one Pokemon that I was actually considering bringing because it was on my Worlds team and I was just considering about bringing my Worlds team with just like a few changes to it but based on like how the Worlds format was shaping up to be afterwards and how I felt with my Worlds team I decided um, I I talked with a few of my other friends and they kind of just told me just use what you feel like you'd be comfortable with and I said if I don't feel comfortable on my Worlds team I'll just use a different team so Gotcha. Okay, so that Isui and Arcanine didn't come into play, but following your, your six and three record is a very good way to start off a season. Following this event, do you wish that you changed up the team a little bit? I think I think I wouldn't change up the team. Um, a lot. My my two losses in round eight and nine were I would like to say entirely due to player error. Um, I 
I hate to admit this, but this is like the second regional where I missed a win it in, um, just because I I didn't make a good uh, the good winning play, the win con play. Um, in Charlotte, or um, yeah, Charlotte regionals of last year, um, I had my win in against Nick Navar, and all I had to do was just click protect on my golden go and let my iron hands uh, get KO'd by his flutter main. Uh, but since I was running out of time, I just panicked. I didn't click protect like I was supposed to. And that same scenario kind of just happened at this regional in round eight. Uh, there was just one scenario where it's just like, I just need to click protect my Urshifu because Landers had, his Landers is choice banded and it's uh, double powered with stomping tantrum since it uh, failed in last turn since uh, I switched in my Landorus. I didn't protect my Urshifu when I thought it was faster. So I ended up getting outsped by the Landorus and killed by it because of the choice ban and the double power. And then by round nine, uh, I just kind of got really unlucky. Um, my Landorus got crit at minus two by a heavy slam. And that made it so I couldn't take any attacks from the Flutter main at that HP threshold. And even in, even in spite of that, I think I could have put myself in a better position if I teared my Golden Go that same turn, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, even, even, even after playing for so long, it's just like, you kind of do make mistakes like that sometimes that you, like, look back on as, like, got to learn from them, you know? Well, you're a well-experienced player. You've got a regional win in your history, so we're expecting great things from here on out. We're sure you're going to do well. Uh, we look forward to seeing you the rest of the season. And is there anything else that you want to say to people rooting on from home that are going to see you on stream later on this year? Listen, I, I know I've been talking about this with a lot of my friends. I want to say that I'm going to win Peoria, but I, I, I'm a realist. It's going to be a tough hill to climb. All right, well, good luck with that. We really look forward to seeing you, especially at Peoria now. So thank you very much. Right, thank you.